Here's another one, love bombing. It stinks, but the real question to me is why do we allow it or even entertain it? There is responsibility on our part for what we allow and accept. Oh my God, I'm so happy you said this. Thank you so much. It's interesting. I was listening to Jordan Peterson earlier today. Some of you might not like him. I find him to be a fascinating intellectual, and he was talking about individual responsibility today. And I was riveted to this talk because I think humans these days lack a level of self-discipline and a level of responsibility. It's we, We've almost become a society, at least here in the United States, that there's a pandering to everybody's marginalized feelings instead of just rec re recognizing that sometimes sticks and stones may break our bones, but names will never hurt us, number one. And number two, we are in charge of our emotional destiny. We don't have to give it to someone to give ourselves, give someone else our power whenever we say, you triggered me, you triggered me. Well, then fucking work on the trigger shit so the next time somebody says a bonehead move, you don't have to feel bad about it. You know, we are like, we are literally suckling on such victimness here. And I'm guilty of this myself. So anyway, taking responsibility of our lives is what gives us the opportunity to have real meaning in our lives. At least that's my perception anyway. Ah, thank you so much for that, I appreciate it. Oh, Kimberly, hey sweetheart, question. Are men that are true narcissists even capable of having an emotionally stable, healthy relationship, or are they truly not worthy of my time? So, You know, narcissists also can come to the table with a lot of benefits. I know a lot of financially successful people, men and women alike, who are narcissistic, and they're great caretakers of their partner, financial caretakers, because for them, everything is about how they look and their image. So I wouldn't completely discount, I mean, a narcissist um, as being incapable of being in a relationship. And I've known many women who have been with narcissists that are taken care of, they just learn to navigate their partner because there's a trade-off going on. So you have to ask yourself, what do you really want and what are you willing to trade off if you're gonna choose to be with a narcissist? And by the way, we are definitely seeing a huge rise in narcissism these days, a huge rise in this, men and women alike, um, and so it's, it's really about selfishness versus selflessness. And it's difficult, to, by the way, ladies, you are not role models of being virtuous. Okay. You, there are just as many gold diggers and women take advantage of men. Every time someone complains, every time I, I recommend taking turns in the dating process and a woman says, I deserve to be financially taken care of by a guy. Well, that's narcissistic. I'm not saying it's narcissism. It's narcissistic to believe that you are better than someone else. And we are suckling on the nipple for a lot of human beings of thinking that they're better than other people instead of saying we are all on this planet doing the best we can. So anyway, you can have a relationship with a narcissist. It's absolutely possible. Are you going to be happy? And we are swimming in a sea of selfishness out there. This is why when I created my coaching program, it's designed to ferret out, to find the needle in the haystack of the pool that we're, we're in. And by the way, the dating marketplace is so fucked up because of dating apps. And yet we're stuck because meeting people organically is almost becoming a thing of the past. So I don't think I have a solution for you. I, I, I put myself out on the dating apps because I look at them as just a spoke in the wheel. But I'm also put myself out there in the real world as well. And it's becoming increasingly harder when your world starts shrinking and you're no longer out with single eligible people. So maybe some of us, many of us have to resign ourselves of, look, we may not find that romantic partner in our life. That may not be in your cards. And recognizing that if that's the case, that's okay too. 
because love wants you to love on yourself first and foremost. And if God, universe, spirit invites in a romantic partner in your life, then be fucking grateful. And by the way, that's another thing I see so lacking is genuine gratitude. We are such a selfish society instead of, look at here in the United States, we literally don't have to worry about too much. We don't have to worry about, I mean, if you've got a job, you've got a roof and you've got food in your fridge, you literally have 80% more than 80% of the population out there. But Americans are so fucking ungrateful, many of them, not all, but so many of them are ungrateful. Why don't you spend some time in India? Why don't you spend some time in Ukraine right now and go, you know what? Maybe I should be grateful for all I have. And the worst thing I don't have is a man in my life or a woman in my life. So fucking what? You got a roof over your head and food in the fridge. Oops, I'm going off on a rant. <laughs> My rant is because what's missing today is genuine gratitude. If you really want to change your life today, everybody, please read this book, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. It teaches you how to talk to the voice in your head. This is my Bible, if there was such a thing. This will change your fucking life. By the way, only read one chapter at one sitting, never more than two chapters in a day, and not one only one chapter at a time. One chapter a day, 19 days. It'll take you about four chapters to figure the fucking book out. And then you'll be thanking me. Purchase the book Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. Big hugs.